Look, good morning, Monday morning, Daily Bible Time, Dominic Steele. Thanks very much for joining us. And look, it is good to be back from holidays. I'm only back at work tomorrow, but I thought I'd join you from this morning to pick up in 1 Corinthians. And we're going to jump forward to verse 23 of 1 Corinthians 11. And uh, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And we're turning our attention to the Bible, to this passage on the Lord's Supper. And it's not all that the Bible says on the subject of the Lord's Supper, but it is the passage that deals most fully and clearly with the Lord's Supper, and it's going to dominate our attention on daily Bible time, well, at least the rest of this week. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to an interaction between the Apostle Paul and the church in Corinth, and I have discovered that when we read this passage in the context of the letter to the Corinthians, rather than plucking it out of context, a whole lot of things are given a different perspective. And so, just to remind us, in the second half of 1 Corinthians, he's reacting, Paul's reacting to things they've asked him about. Um, Paul just dealt in chapters 8, 9, and 10 with the matter of food, sacrifice to idols, and he's just about to deal in chapters 12, 13, and 14 with the subject of spirituality and how they interact as a body. And the main teaching point of 8, 9, and 10 was that they should act in the interests of the other person that they should do what is best for the other person to grow in Christ. And um, actually, if you look back to part of the application of that teaching in 1 Corinthians 10, 14, Paul was arguing that whereas it's technically possible for you to eat meat that's been sacrificed to idols and that it's not really contaminated, it isn't contaminated spiritually because the idol doesn't exist, he goes on to say there'll be some younger Christians who don't understand so run a more conservative position. This is chapter 10, verse 15. He writes, I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. And he gives a little extra argument for his point by drawing a parallel from Christian ministry. Um, and then in 16, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. Now, just, just grab this as a little aside, as a blurring of the metaphors. We drink the cup and break bread together. We participate together in the benefits of the death of the body of Christ. But there is one loaf. We who are many are one body. The body is Christ's body broken, and the body is the people of Christ, the gathered church. And it becomes clearer when you get to chapter 12, when it's all about building up the body of Christ. And so between chapters 8 to 10 and 12 to 11, there's chapter 11, and chapter 11 has a super stinging rebuke. And Paul argues that your Christian gatherings to sell, your Christian gatherings in Corinth to celebrate the Lord's Supper actually do more harm than good. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17, he writes in the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. Now just get a grasp of that. Imagine you got a letter from the pastor or an official and they said of our church it would be better if your church did not meet. I mean that, as an eldership, I mean that would rock us, I mean that's a very serious charge. I mean. The reason we actually come together as a church is to build each other up. We, it's not primarily to get, it's primarily to give. And, um, but that's not what's happening here. Paul goes on to explain the problem in Corinth. He says, in the first place I hear when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. To some extent I believe it. I mean, no doubt there have to be divisions among you to show which of you have God's approval. If you've got people coming to Christ and growing to Christ, there are going to be differences. Um, there's always going to be some people who are going forward, some people who are muddling along, some who are not going so well. And I, I think you can assume God would want people to be growing in Christ rather than go backwards. There will always be some division in the church. There will always be true believer and false believer. And I mean, that's been my experience. But that's not kind of approval and disapproval that Paul's speaking of here. Paul's speaking of when it's in a church, it, what's going on is so bad 
that the whole body of Christ, the whole practice of the Christian gathering is so flawed that they're all collectively heading into sin. What they're doing is so bad it would be better if this church did not meet at all. So sentence 20, when you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat, for as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anyone else. The problem in this church that's being highlighted is not the theological division that might happen in some other instances, uh, might happen in the chapter earlier when some were eating food sacrificed to idols, some weren't in the chapter earlier, the chapter later when some are speaking in tongues and some aren't. The problem here is not theological. It's sentence 20, they're not eating the Lord's Supper because sentence 21, they're eating their own supper. They're having an intense individual experience rather than doing something together. They're on about selfish me rather than group us, or even better, to be on about collective him. Well, that's a very serious introduction. It would be better if your church did not meet, says the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are so wrong in this. It would be better if you did not meet. You've got to fix this. And tomorrow we begin the process of working out how to do the Lord's Supper right in a way that the Apostle of God would approve. And I hope you can be with us tomorrow because, of course, it's not just in Corinth, there are implications for us. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today. Look forward to your company Tuesday morning. Cheers. God bless.